This is what the ancient Egyptians would actually look like. Dark skinned olive tone, like myself. You can clearly tell from all their depictions. This accurately depicts me. Studies found that they're closely related to the Middle Eastern regions such as Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, etc. Leave my pharaohs and my people out of your mouth. This is what the ancient Egyptians actually look like. <laughs> and then he uses dark skin, olive tone. But you know how we do it on this channel. We're going to bring on the scholarship. First, let's look at what the people who actually saw the ancient Egyptians said they looked like. The most famous quote is from Herodotus, known as the father of history among the Europeans. And he says, uh, there can be no doubt that the Caucasians are an Egyptian race. Before I heard any mention of the fact from others, I had remarked it myself. After the thought had struck me, I made inquiries on the subject both in Colchis and in Egypt. And I found that the Colchians had a more distinct recollection of the Egyptians than the Egyptians had of them. Still, the Egyptians said that they believed that the Colchians to be descendants from the army of Sesostris. My own conjectures were founded first on the fact that they are black-skinned and have woolly hair. He uses the word dark skin uh, because uh, it makes it vague. Uh, Europeans can discuss only just among themselves. Only white people can discuss dark skin only just among themselves. But as you can see, this translation clearly states black skinned. But the other, the most important part, the most distinguishing characteristic that he leaves out is the part that they had woolly hair. This is what you call woolly hair. Miss Universe 2019 left, Miss Greece 2022 middle, Miss Egypt 2022 right. Only one has black skin and woolly hair. Now that boy does not have any woolly hair. He's got wavy hair. There are quite a few uh, ancient Greeks who have uh, recorded and described the ancient Egyptians, but I'm only going to use two in this video. And the next one is Aristotle. A closer look at, uh, at the quote, it says, Why are the Ethiopians and the Egyptians bandy-legged? Is it because the bodies of living creatures become distorted by heat, like logs of wood when they become dry? The condition of their hair too supports the theory, for it is curlier than that of other nations, and even curliness as it is were crookedness of the hair. What I love about this quote is he doesn't just use the term curly. He says their hair has more crookedness than any other nation. Who has more crookedness of hair than any other nation? Black people, duh. <laughs> And the kid used uh, this picture from the judgment scene of Hunefa in the Book of Coming Forth by Day, uh, claiming that um, this is his, uh, you know, skin color. But any, the only thing that actually matches his skin color on this picture is the papyrus itself. <laughs> because the main characters of this scene, the, the brother that you see on the on the left in, in white robes who's actually being judged, you can see right there, this is a black man. This is a Bantu. He looks nothing like olive tone. <laughs> in fact, my skin color actually matches uh, the, the brother that you see right there. I mean, look at his hair as well. Just look at his hair. That's a, a black man's hair right there. And by the way, that brother was, uh, that you see on the judgment scene is brother who never. Now, when comparing uh, pictures of who looks like the ancient Egyptians, we do it better because we don't pick random Egyptians. We actually use the royal family, the pharaohs, uh, because we understand that ancient Egypt did not exclude people of other races and attracted people from different races. And so, obviously, many people from different races would be incorporated and integrated into the society and be, could become and could participate in that society. I mean, even the most racist 
uh, societies today do have different races. So, <laughs> this is not a match. Well, neither is this. On the left, you, we actually have a bust of Toots Ankamen, and on the right, we have this computer remake. Ah, uh, nah, it's not a match, sorry. <laughs> And these trolls like to use these uh, reconstructions as if it's an actual science. And if it is a science, uh, why do we have the British reconstruction of King Tut Ankhamen with the same skull on the left looking like a black man? And then the one on the right done by the French looks like a Frenchman. It's ridiculous. Definitely a match. On the left, we have uh, Tut Ankamen, how he was portrayed in ancient Kemet. And on the right, we have a modern African child. It's a match. And here we have an olive-skinned uh, person standing next to an ancient Egyptian artifact. And you can see, not a match. And I'm sure the scholar is not smiling because it's delusional to actually think that, uh, that he looks like uh, the statue. And in the letters of the alphabet in the Medunetta, or the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, uh, the letter for face or the hieroglyph for face is this one right here. Now, Africans uh, don't have one phenotype as the mothers and the fathers of the human race. We have the most diversity of all people all around the world. African continent has the biggest diversity. Even I don't have a nose like that as an African, but I'm still pure African. Most East Africans won't have it, not because they mix, but because we gave the type of nose that you associate with uh, Asians, we gave it to the Asians. But I got relatives with noses like that. But Mr. Does Not, we, uh, this nose only belongs to people of the black race and mr yeah, looks more like uh, the lady uh, the white lady that you see in this picture uh, who is standing next to the ancient egyptian artifact and you can see the contrast in the skin color it's quite great that's a black person right there with their locks their long locks that is definitely a match. Oh, most definitely a match. And this right here is the statue of Osiris. You can see the features. Bantu. And what you're looking at right now is the picture of fishermen from the tomb of uh, Ipui from 1275 BCE. Just look at the brothers. Look at their hair black folks what you're looking at is the mummy of queen Ojmet. you can see she is a black woman and she's from the 20th dynasty may her soul rest in peace and here you're looking at the mummy of queen henetawi of the 20th dynasty may her soul rest in peace as you can see she's a black woman and when the Greeks went into, into ancient Kemet and saw these colossal statues of Amenhotep III, they called it the Colossi of Memnon. And Memnon is an Ethiopian king in Greek mythology. And this is the bust of Memnon as displayed in the museum. Clearly a black man. So the question is why would the ancient Greeks associate Amenhotep III uh, an ancient Egyptian pharaoh with an, with an Ethiopian if he was not black. Definitely a match. <laughs> what you're looking at right now on the right is uh, Queen Nefertiti and on the left you are looking at South African musician Zonke. It's a perfect match, folks. And now you're looking at Iron Mike on the right and Pharaoh Nama on the left. It's definitely a match. We could do this all day, but the most important part is what the ancient Egyptians themselves had to say. To watch that video, click the link in my bio.